Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Brothers and sisters, as you've seen, this Peace Conference 2009, mashallah, has been so inspiring, so much happening, so much more to come. So please make sure that your friends, families, everyone knows about this so that we can expand even more, inshallah, with the help of Allah. The next speaker now I'd like to introduce you to, Sheikh Abdurrahim Makathi. And uh, he is going to be speaking on the path to victory. So just a little bit of a background uh, information on him. Uh, he accepted Islam in 1994 and traveled to Sudan to study Islam. He relocated to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia to study the Quran and Tajweed and the Arabic language. Uh, he was accepted into the Islamic University of Medina and enrolled into the Arabic Institute and then graduated from the faculty of Dawa and Usul Adin. Now his experience, uh, mashallah, is quite extensive. Now between 2008 and uh, beginning of 2009, he was a British educational school of Khartoum, Sudan, where he taught. He was a teacher of Islamic studies, uh, history, and boys basketball coach as well, mashallah. He was also the head of Islamic studies department. He was a teacher of um, Islamic studies in both Arabic and English. Other experience includes, uh, he was a da'i with the World Organization for Propagating Islam in Medina, Saudi Arabia in 2006. Uh, he was a da'i with um, the Di Noreen charity organization in Khartoum. Da'i also with Al Mishkat Charity Organization in Khartoum, a lecturer at Welcome to Islam Organization in Khartoum. Uh, he was a frequent lecturer at Islamic Culture Association, University of Medical Science and Technology. Other skills include commanding a grasp of the Arabic language, ability to teach in both Arabic and English, strong leadership skills, mashallah, good with working with children and colleagues, and he studied and benefited from more than 100 different scholars, mashallah, and his brother's heritage is Irish American. So without further ado, and without boring you anymore with my long spiel, but mashallah, very extensive. Sheikh Abdul Rahim McCarthy, please join us, brother. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahir Rabbil Alameen. Wa usalli wa usallim ala al-mab'uth rahmatan lil alameen. Nabiyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa ba'd. Today, my second public lecture, I can say alhamdulillah, it's, it's good to be here. The first lecture I had, the Indian food, it, it got me, you know. So I wasn't, uh, I couldn't really smile and I couldn't be myself in that lecture. So I couldn't tell you if it's good to be here because I wasn't feeling too good that day, but alhamdulillah, now I can say alhamdulillah, it's good to be here and like to thank the brothers for all their hospitality and all the brothers and sisters who have come out to this uh, great event. And perhaps the topic that I'm going to talk about is very similar to the topic that was talked about by Sheikh Abdul Bari, or ex maybe one of them could be an introduction for the other. And he was mentioning in his lecture, and perhaps you benefited a lot, because he woke me up as I was waiting. He was, I seemed like he was pumped up, so hopefully any, you guys benefited from him. And the path, we're going to talk, inshallah, about the path to victory. What is the path to victory and how can we be victorious as a Muslim ummah? And we're going to start today's lecture, inshallah, wa ta'ala, uh, looking at uh, the Quran and the understanding of victory, the fiqh of the victory, understanding the victory or nasr in the Quran al kareem so the first thing we see in the Quran is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He showed us how to be victorious in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu in tansur Allah yansurkum wa yuthabbit aqdamakum. O you who believe, if you, are, if you support Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you support Allah, then He will support you and He will make your feet firm. And another verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says, وَلَا يَنْصُرَنَّ اللَّهَ مَنْ يَنْصُرُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَقَوِّيٌ عَزِيزٌ In this verse, it's impossible to translate because of the emphasis Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put on this subject with 
taqidat in the Arabic language. And this shows us the importance of learning the Arabic language. And you can never truly understand the beauty of the Quran unless you know the Arabic language. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts emphasis, the ta'kidat with the noon, a tawkid, and with the lamb, and all of this to show you and to confirm and to affirm that He will make you victorious. But He says, He gives a description of these people who will make victorious. Pay attention. The ayah continues. He says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, Alladheena in makkannahum fil ard aqamu salat wa atu al zakat wa amuru bil ma'roof wa nahu anil munkar. These people who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make victorious, these are their characteristics, that they are from the people that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them authority on the earth, they will establish the prayer. They will give a zakat and they will call to that which is good and forbid that which is evil. In this verse, it shows us the importance and the reality of victory in Islam. It's not something that just comes without any effort. It is not something that just comes without effort. A lot of Muslims today, they sit at home in their houses and they sit on their couches and they watch the news and what is happening to the Muslim Ummah around the world. And they say, why is this happening? We have the correct religion. We have the truth. So why aren't we victorious? You see very clearly in this ayah, in this verse, that we are not going to be victorious as an Ummah if we do not follow the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And being victorious as an ummah, we have to realize that it's not going to come without hardships and without difficulties and calamities. It's something that's not going to come easily. And you see this in the seerah of our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He is the most beloved of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to Allah. He is the best of all of mankind that has ever been created. And with this, look at the hardships that he and his companions, radiallahu anhum, and sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, look at the hardships they went through in Mecca. How many years did they stay in Mecca and they were in these difficult times where the kuffar had the upper hand and when they used to torture the sahaba and where they tried, made fun of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they called him a liar. They called him a poet and a magician. They wanted to kill him before he made Hijrah alayhi salatu wasalam. They all came together to assassinate him alayhi salatu wasalam. And with this, and he is the best of creation. All of this, and he is the best of creation, subhanAllah. And then later, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened up Medina for the Muslims, he, the victory then came. And also it was not right away. There was the first great victory in Badr, and then the Muslims were defeated in Nuhud, and then went up and down until the Islam was established all through the Arabian Peninsula, and in this, in the Muslims in Islam had the upper hand. So victory is not going to come easy. We must realize this. But one of the beautiful things about us being patient and being steadfast during these hard times is that the enemies of Islam, the people who used to fight Islam, they will call themselves to account and they will say if this Islam if this religion that these Muslims had if it was not the religion of truth why would they be willing to be so patient and go through all the hardships in order to practice their religion and then they will start to search about Islam and look to Islam and they will come from the people who used to be the enemies of Islam to those who will enter Islam and then become our brothers in Islam inshallah ta'ala the second point which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala points out in the Quran is that the enemies of Islam, no matter what they do, how much money they pay, no matter how hard they try, that they will never be victorious in the end. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Yuriduna nur Allahi bi afwahim, that they want to put out the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with their with their mouths, so they want to, to blow it out. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to them, In this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it clear that even though they want to put out the light of Allah, the religion of Allah, the nur of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that they will not be successful. And Allah subhanahu wa refuses, except for to perfect his religion, even if the 
disbelievers dislike that. Al Aziz, Al -Aziz. The, Almighty. the Almighty. Al Wadud, Al -Wadud. The, All the All Loving. Al Tawab, The Acceptor of Your Return. Al Razaq, The Provider. Al-Raqib, the All-Watchful. Walillahi al-Asma'u al-Husna, to Allah belongs the beautiful names. Fad'uhu biha, to call him upon them. To understand more of Allah's beautiful names, join me, your brother Majid Mahmoud, on my new series about understanding Allah's beautiful names on Peace TV. Allah la ilaha illa huwa lahu al-asma'u al-husna Allahu ya Don't miss the chance to comprehend the seamless explanation of Allah's beautiful names in understanding Allah's beautiful names every Saturday at 7 p.m. and repeat telecast at 12 p.m. India on Peace TV where truth is hidden, misleading quotations create confusion. Where truth is hidden, lack of knowledge and wisdom cause upheaval and commotion. Where truth is hidden, manipulate scriptures and twisted facts emerge. This very hidden truth creates false propaganda, mayhem, chaos, disorder, and turmoil in our lives and the world order. But is there anyone with courage and wisdom? What is the truth? And who has the courage to expose it? Because it's your right to know the truth. Right. Watch Truth Prevail and Lies Perish in Truth Exposed by Dr. Zakir Naik. Every Sunday to Friday at 9 p.m. and repeat telecast at 7.30 a.m. India on Peace TV. And also if you look when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in another verse, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا يُنْفِقُونَ أَمْوَالَهُمْ That verily those who have disbelieved they pay from their money. Or they will, they will pay from their money. Why? So they can avert people from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they will pay it. And then it will be for them a type of regret. It will be a hasra, a type of regret. And then they will be defeated after that. And as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَيَمْكُرُونَ وَيَمْكُرُ اللَّهُ Wallahu khayrul makirin that they are planning and that Allah is planning. He is the best of planners, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So even though we see nowadays what the enemies of Islam, what they do to fight Islam directly and indirectly. Now, all throughout the, the media, they call the Muslims terrorists, and Islam is the religion of violence and this and that, and that the Muslims do not respect their women. There's no women's rights. A religion that came 1400 years ago when the French people were debating whether the woman was a devil or a human being. What is she? So this has been proven in the books of history. 1400 years ago, they were debating during the time that the Prophet Muhammad, when he became a prophet in Mecca, during this time, they were debating 
is the woman a devil or is she a human being? And what was their conclusion? That she was a devil, she wasn't a human being. And Islam came and gave rights to the women at that time. So now they try to spread all of these misconceptions about Islam and all of these false statements about Islam and they try to fight Islam in every which way they can. But as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it very clear in these verses that no matter what they do and how hard they strive and no matter what they pay for their money that they will never be successful. The third point that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran when talking about victory and this is very important. When he said in Surah Ali Imran, that if you are wounded, or you are afflicted with being wounded, then also they have been wounded before you. And then he makes it clear, subhanahu wa ta'ala, that these are the days that we alternate them between the people. So these days, people ask now, why? Do the kufar have the upper hand? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it very clear. These are the days that we alternate between the people. So some days or some years they will have the upper hand and then others we will have the upper hand. And this is how it has been since the beginning of Islam. That sometimes, alhamdulillah, the upper hand is for the non-Muslims and sometimes it's for the Muslims. And as we see today, unfortunately, the days we live in, they have the upper hand. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't stop there in the verse. He continued to explain some of the hikmas, some of the wisdoms in why they have the upper hand. So he can know those who have believed, meaning those who have truthfully believed. So Allah can know the true believers. Because during the times of the hardships and difficulties. This is when we see the true believers and those who claim to be believers. And also to take from a shuhada, the best thing that can happen to a Muslim is to be a shaheed, to die for his religion, to die for la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. And how can we get this if the upper hand is always to the Muslims? How can we get this shahada? if the Muslims always have the upper hand and we do not have to defend our religion. So this is from the hikmas. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, he made it very clear, Wallahu la yuhibbu dhalimeen. Even though they might have the upper hand, that Allah does not love the oppressors. So even if they have the upper hand, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not love them. And then the next verse after that in 141, it continues, when he says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَلِيُمَحِسَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَيَمْحَقَ الْكَافِرِينَ So he can purify the believers and so he can destroy the disbelievers. These are all from the hikmas that we see and why the days are alternated between the haqq, between the truth, and between the batil and between falsehood. And yet another verse on this point, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تَهِنُوا فِي ابْتِغَاءِ الْقَوْمِ do not weaken in pursuit of the enemy. That if you are suffering, then verily they are suffering as well. But the difference between us and between them, Allah makes it clear as the verse continues. And you hope from Allah that which they do not hope. This is the difference between us and between them. The Muslim would love to die for his religion, would love to die for La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah anywhere he is, because he knows the status of the person who dies for his religion. But the non-Muslim hopes to live forever, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it clear in the Quran as well. And he's not willing to die. You want from them, or you hope from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala something that they do not hope. They just want to be victorious and go back home. But well, the, the Muslim, he wants to be victorious as well, but he hopes to be a shaheed in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The fourth point that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran on the subject of victory is that he has promised us. Allah has promised those who believe and do good deeds and pay attention to these two conditions. 
and there'll be a third condition at the end of the ayah. For, for this promise to be, for us to be successful in getting this promise from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the first thing is the iman. And then comes after that, al-amal al-salih, the good deeds. And a lot of Muslims today claim to be Muslims, but they forget all through the Quran. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions iman, belief, he mentions as well al-amal al-salih, the good deeds. And this shows us that Islam is religion of actions. Not something we say on our tongues, something we have in our hearts. Sahih it is in our hearts and on our tongues, but it's actions after that. And this is belief in Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises these people who have believed and done good deeds, He promises them three things here in this verse. That He will give them succession to authority as He has given those before them. And that he will establish for them their religion, the religion that he is pleased with. And that he will substitute for them after their fear a form of safety. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and pay attention, this is the third condition. We mentioned before the belief and the amal al-salih and the good deeds. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says here towards the end of the verse, يَعْبُدُونَنِي لَا يُشْرِكُونَ بِي شَيْئًا That they worship me and they do not join any partners with me. Subhanallah. This shows us the importance of Tawheed, of the true Islamic monotheism that our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called to from the beginning of his da'wah until he was on his deathbed alayhi salatu wa salam. And that this is the core of Islam, La ilaha illallah, and those who claim to be Muslim and do acts of worship and offer acts of worship to, to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are not from the people who have been promised these three things in this verse. And the fifth point, Allah shows us in the Quran that we are the superior. Al-A'loon, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the Muslims, وَلَا تَهِنُوا وَلَا تَحْسَنُوا وَأَنْتُمْ الْأَعْلَوْن إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ do not weaken or become saddened and you are the superior if you are truly believers. So now people might ask, how can we be the superior when they have the upper hand? And as we mentioned in the verse before that, that this is just something Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen for the days to be alternated between haqq falsehood in between Baal for some of the reasons he mentioned in the verse we mentioned before. But a Muslim always knows that he is superior. Even if the Muslims are on a weak stage, the Islam is the religion of haqq. Alhamdulillah. Islam is the religion of truth and proof after proof proof is, proves this to all of mankind that Islam is the religion of truth. Even if you look at the scientific things that have been proven today, something that never could have been known 1400 years ago, and now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing in the time where science is very strong. He's showing the people the truth of Islam through sciences. And all throughout the history of Islam, you'll see the proofs that Islam is the religion of truth. So a Muslim is always superior. And the sixth point is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is our helper and there is no helper for them. That is because Allah is the helper of the believers and the kafirin, the disbelievers, there is no helper for them.